By the way, is this the show? Oh, uh, no. I wait until an awkward moment happens and I hit this button right here. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 104 for uh, 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 the 30th of November, 2016. Man, I am just screwing everything up today. This is amazing. Awesome. Love it. Um, <laughs> this is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else happens. And uh, I'm Amos. That's Kent. And we have Podfeet with us tonight, Miss Allison Sheridan. How are you doing? I'm doing good. This is uh, this can be fun. I have very little idea of what to expect from this. I tried to watch a bunch of shows to get an idea, and I still don't know. <laughs> Does that mean I understand? You understand Didn't. completely. <laughs> you're you're in. You're in. You're there. All, All right. right. That is uh, awesome. So, go ahead, Kent. I was just gonna say that is awesome. We are off to a wonderful start. Um, tr- trying to troubleshoot some tech issues and screwing up the intro. That well, that's kind of standard these days. Um, but yeah. yeah, we do have an, an awesome guest. Welcome, Allison. We are so happy to have you here tonight. Thanks for having me. What fun! Uh, I'm just and the whole thing records this time. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Man, it is getting cold here. It is like 35 degrees, almost legitimately freezing here in New Mexico. It is insane. Um, 35 degrees in New Mexico. That's, that's not normal. No, it's not. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, it really makes me want to start a fire, which was, which is kind of coincidental because this past weekend, that's kind of what I did all weekend was make fires in the backyard and it was absolutely awesome. But then again, it was only like 50 degrees then. So it was a lot more comfortable now, man, I would have to probably set the house on fire to warm up now um just just for for reference today's high was seven degrees <laughs> and that's fair i heard a weather, i heard a weather report this week that warned that it was going to be pretty cold this week it wasn't going to get above 72 so that was good <laughs> oh geez and you are in what southern california southern california yeah yeah, yeah. i was uh, in san diego last week and the and the uh the uh weather woman actually said temperatures are gonna plummet and the in the temperature on screen was 70 degrees oh my gosh <laughs> that um, sounds awesome our, it, it was uh it was negative three degrees on my drive into work this morning Jeez. Uh, where, are you, where are you guys i'm in anchorage ah so you, you paid for that privilege then you know and the funny thing is like he's there because the military sent him there but he's been trying for two decades to get there to get there yeah oh okay so you really did do it on purpose (laughs) yeah i uh yeah i certainly did um i've been trying to get here since i was six because i wanted to see the aurora borealis uh (sighs) with my own eyes and now that i've seen it it was totally worth it totally worth it Nice. Yeah, see, I, I think I could do like a two-week vacation up there just to see the northern lights, and then that'd be enough for me. Oh, no, 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 no. no. There, there's something about having uh, fairy dust falling on your vehicle as you're driving into work in the morning. Uh, <laughs> it's not quite snow. It's just like frozen. <laughs> it's just frozen air. <laughs> <laughs> Man. It's completely nuts. It's great. So we just had a holiday, Thanksgiving. Uh, was yours any good, Amos? Uh, most relaxing Thanksgiving ever, ever. It was great. Yeah. Um, lots of good food, good napping. No, no. Uh, just, just watching the, uh, watching a little, little bit of football, eating some pizza, have pie. Pizza. Yeah. Pizza for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Classic Thanksgiving meal then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and in true ritual misery fashion, this is, uh, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm getting drop frames warnings. So this show is just going to be amazing this week. So it's really uh, going off the rails. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we, we basically sat down and played Munchkin, the Marvel version, taught the kids how to play that. So it was great. And my wife still doesn't understand the game which is great because it gives me, me and the kids something to share. <laughs> oh, Allison, have you ever played Munchkin? No, I haven't even heard of it. Oh, uh, it's, I don't, I meant to have it here. 
it's basically a game where it's a card game where the whole point is to reach level 10 and then you win. And, uh, you can help people, you can hurt people, you can aid the enemy, which is always the game. And it's like a, a, a kick down the door, stab your enemy, save your friend. And it's the same person. And it's just great. It's, it's, the, it's the, so diabolical. The cool thing about it is it's it's a card game. It's very much a card game, but it is doing its best to approximate the experience of playing a tabletop role-playing game. Oh, so, so you have yeah. you have your character and you can add armor and uh, you, you know weapons and things like that. So the, you know the gameplay it feels like you're playing an RPG but is very much a draw cards and act on them kind of game. It's actually re- really cool, and they, they have probably a thousand different varieties at this point. Uh, there's a zombies version, of course. What doesn't have a zombies version? Uh, yeah. a- Amos was playing the Marvel Comics edition of it. Uh, there's, I mean, no kidding, hundreds of, of varieties of it. It's actually really fun. Interesting. I'm looking at it. $14. Yeah. Are, are you a, a tabletop game player at all? Um, not really. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, you'll ask me about music, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make that mistake. <laughs> no, my, my kids are actually, uh, grown and get, but they're getting me into doing some more, uh, some card games, but we play, they have to play stuff that's real simple for me and, and Steve, because, uh, if it gets too complicated, we get lost. It's kind of sad. <laughs> like they tried Settlers of Catan on us once. I was like, no, we're not. We're, oh yeah, we're not up to that challenge. <laughs> I, I still have yet to play that one. Haven't uh, haven't haven't made it that far in my geekhood. So I, I've I've never really seen the appeal of that game. I've played Catan, and I, I've actually played a couple different versions of Catan, and it's okay. But I don't I don't know the like the mass geek appeal of the game. It, it to me it just feels very. Uh, simplified and repetitive. Mm. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> so Allison, how was your Thanksgiving? It was great. We had uh, about 15 people. Uh, Steve cooks a ridiculous amount of food, no matter how many people come. So I try to invite as many as I can. Cause it, I, I remember one year we had, it was nine people and he made a 23 pound Turkey and a 10 pound ham. <laughs> It's before any of the side dishes. And there's always three pies. No matter how many people come, there have to be three pies because you got to have your pumpkin, your apple, and your pecan. So uh, he cooks a ridiculous amount of food. I'm I'm sort of the the assistant in the whole thing. I make a mean cranberry chutney, though. Oh. So how do you deal with all that food? Uh, Or or is is that why you work out so much? Because uh, I'm (laughs) you're a big fan of the working out. Oh, absolutely. I, I, uh, I work out twice a day now. Uh, I retired and now I work out twice a day so I can eat and drink anything I want. It's awesome. <laughs> that sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> oh, it, does, it works. That's awesome. I actually had my PT test today. So, um, I, I was waste only because of my back problems, which is good, but it's the last time I have to do a PT test before my 40th birthday. But so from now on there, they should basically be easy. Right. What's uh, a PT test? It's a physical physical fitness test, I guess. I don't even okay. know. Yeah, they, uh, they keep changing the acronyms. It's, it's basically yeah. your, your um, yeah, physical fitness. Yeah, you, you nailed it, Amos. <laughs> Push up, sit ups, and some run with the waist measurement. And uh, yeah, uh, as you get older, they get easier. <laughs> well, at once you mean they're decade. easier on you? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not as harsh with their judgment of you. Is pretty much. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what you're trying to say. Yeah, they they lower the standards basically once a decade. So when you're 20, when you're 30, when you're 40, when you're 50, they. Oh, so lower you're right, the hitting the sweet spot now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm finally, finally hitting that uh, that that 40 year old tier in April, and man, that's gonna be that's gonna be glorious. <laughs> Yeah, that well, reminds me of a joke I saw recently where somebody uh, asked how old this guy was. He said, I'm 80. He said, you don't look 80. And he said, well, you haven't heard me stand up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's pretty much me anymore. I'll, I'll get up out of bed and just, just like snap, crackle, pop. Uh, and that's before I get my Rice Krispies. <laughs> Maybe I should tell that joke at 40 or 50. That'd probably be funnier, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It sounds about right, though. The kids are always wondering what's going on with... Uh, What's going on with my knees as I'm going up the stairs? Because it literally feels like porn sometimes. It's awful. Um, Allison, what's what's the geekiest thing you did this week? 
Well, I had one idea to tell you about then, but then I started messing around with something else. Um, I've got a Netgear Nighthawk X8. It's a uh, the R8500. It's a wicked book router. It's really cool. It's like this big. It's like the size of your desk, and it's got it's got four uh, antennas, uh, four active antennas. Uh, actually, it's got four internal internal antennas, four external antennas, and they're active. So they've got the uh, the receiver up on the tip of the antennas. It's a tri-band router. It's really, really cool. Um, fantastic coverage in my house. But uh, I found out that it has a uh, built-in VPN. And I thought, well, that sounds fun. You know, this is a consumer-grade router. It's probably a switch I check, right? <laughs> no. Uh, I, I, turning it on was easy, but it's uh, it required uh, downloading a bunch of profiles that I had to get onto my Mac or my iPhone. I'd start on the iPhone path and pretty much abandoned that whole path after a while because it got weird. And then uh, tried to get it running on my Mac, and I got uh, had to install TunnelBlick to uh, try to get that going. And, and I... I'm not quite sure. It might be fighting. I've also got Cloak installed on this Mac. It might be fighting with that. But I couldn't get the uh, profile to load on the iPhone either. It would it would accept one of the files, but not the other three. It, the main idea is to be able to get into my home network from the outside because I want to I want to set up backups for my daughter inside on my uh, Drobo uh, for her to do from uh, out of town. But I haven't got that working yet. So if anybody knows how to do this, that'd be fun. <laughs> I'm sure Diamond is Club is ge- full of, of of people geeky enough to figure that one out. Yeah, was that geeky enough? That's that's, that's super geeky. I understood about half of what you said. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I recently had some uh, some great times with my routers, and I, I can honestly say that when when your computer is going bad, like and apparently is, um, <laughs> you know, you, you have you have issues, and then you have like major issues. And when your router wants to go down or you don't understand something, you click something wrong in your router and it affects your entire house all at the same time. Man, that's a scary, scary thought. But when you figure it out, when you, when you win against the router, that's like, like crack up with <laughs> this is a good time. Well, I like to, uh, keep changing it up. I recently, um, uh, set it up. So I've got two routers. I've got a router dedicated to my internet of things devices and, uh, it's running in parallel. So that's in airport extreme and that's running in parallel to the net, the net gear. And then they both go into the, uh, frontier Fios, uh, router that I've emasculated and made just simply like a switch. So the, the, uh, the real routing and Wi-Fi is done by the other two routers, but that means you go to get on our network and there's six of them and they're all mine. <laughs> What do I, what do I, I don't know. <laughs> See, routers to me have always been really scary to mess with. So once I get it working, I don't touch it. You don't it. want to touch it? <laughs> Ever. <laughs> I, I, I actually have three. I've got an Airport Extreme, uh, a Time Capsule, and a WRT 1900. Uh, oh, cool. Running, that's actually the main router. And then the Apple routers kind of run off that. And it's all hardwired to spread the signal throughout the house and everything else. Cause my house isn't very like wide, but it's very tall. It's three stories tall. Okay. So, well, it's like two plus a walkout basement, whatever. Um, <laughs> so the signal doesn't like to carry between the floors at all, but each router will carry its own floor perfectly. So, <laughs> well, that's great. If you've got, uh, you've got uh cat five or cat six in the house. Yeah. The, the phone lines that we don't use were run as cat five. So oh, nice. those over to, uh, to actual you know, cat five cables and they, they work perfectly. Well, it, it works perfectly for the first router. The other one I had to go with the Mocha adapter to send okay. the cable line down here to the, uh, the, the studio slash basement office thing that I'm in now. Man cave. <laughs> <laughs> it will be. Um, I plan on actually cleaning it up and putting some posters and stuff up. You know, I got some, some Niners posters and things like that to put up. That'll be official you know, crappy man cave that every man is <laughs> one of life, right? So Dave Hamilton and John F. Braun have just done a, a deep dive into uh, these new mesh routers that was pretty interesting on the Mac Geek Ab. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it's pretty interesting. Have you heard of Eero? Mm-hmm. They're, they're the ones that have started doing this, and, and uh, both of you guys might like this, one for not wanting to know about it, one for knowing about it. Um, they're, they're basically three routers that you get in a pack, and they no one of them is the main router. 
So you plug each of them in to three different spots in your house, and they one of them will be plugged into uh, into your uh, cable modem, of course, or your your uh, whatever kind of modem you have, and uh, the three communicate amongst themselves and decide which devices should talk to which one, and they provide tre- a tremendous coverage. Um, there, oh, there's another one by uh, Netgear called Orbi that does really well. If you if you don't have hardwire in your house, that's probably a, a good choice. If you if you can hardwire all three of them, that's spectacular. But if you can't, uh, the the uh, um, the Orbi from Netgear sounds pretty good too. If I hadn't just bought this this one single wicked fast router, I would have looked into this. But it's the main thing is you plug them in and it does all the figuring out. So yeah. you don't have to be real smart about it. And it does a, a, a spectacular job of, as Dave Hamilton says, bathing your house in Internet, <laughs> especially good for your, your three story tall thing. You can have one on each level and they're all going to pass. It, it's not it's not like the old range extenders. It They really are generating their own uh, Wi-Fi and, and uh, they're uh, I think they're tri-band. So pretty. And it's like that MIMO, Moo MIMO stuff they're always yapping about. Yeah, <laughs> not really clear on what that is. I know what it stands that, for, but that doesn't help me understand yet. Yeah. Right, right. I have, um, I've never been a fan of the 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 uh, signal boosters or the the range extenders, uh, just because I, I used to have one when I was in a, a really big house in Germany, and I kind of needed it to reach all of the nooks and crannies of the house. But my devices kept f- like changing their mind on which one they wanted to connect yeah. to and it was just it was constantly and, and part of the problem is they're what they what those things did was they would take a weak signal have some loss and broadcast that weak signal farther yes. and so yeah. you're already starting with a bad signal losing some more and then sending it on farther so it, it really didn't make it was the best they had at the time but they were also single band so it was the same radio that was receiving and then transmitting again so these are dual bands so it's receiving transmitting at the uh, at the same time and and doing a lot to boost the signal i think oh very nice yeah uh, the whole reason uh, the whole reason i came up, i end up with uh, three routers is because we had the time machine at the house, and then I was going to go to Korea for a year, and I wanted a router to take with me, so I ended up buying the Airport Extreme, figuring out when we you know, combined houses again later when we moved up here, we'd just plug them in, they'd just work together. <laughs> and that originally worked just fine until, um, well, we have one terabyte Mac here, that's our cap, and we were exceeding it, and I couldn't figure out why. And, of course, what? the Apple routers have no um, software at all. So I had, I had to pick up something that I could use to figure out what was using up all the eating up all the bandwidth. Found out that it was actually my uh, my drop cams because we have three drop cams in the house. Oh and wow! Set to 720 or 1080, to, uh, and yeah, they they were killing. Each of them were killing like 60 gigs a day. Oh jeez! Oh my! Were they yeah. saving everything? Or uh, transmitting were, everything constantly? That's yeah, because that's what drop cams do. They 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 send it out to the server at all times. Then you can you can tap into it uh, when you you want to watch it. Well, I guess but, that makes sense then. Yeah, but I just turned down the resolution on those, and now they're they're fine. They're you know ten gigs a day or whatever. However, whatever it ended up being at the end, but we're we're way below our cap now. But yeah, this is those dang drop cams. <laughs> but I would never have known that if I would stuck with just my Apple router because they don't have any reporting at all. Yeah, my my buddy. Uh, 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 Chris Ashley on the SMR podcast had the weirdest problem. He happened to mention that uh, he's got Comcast and Comcast technically had a, a limit, but they never enforced it. And he, and he just idly mentioned on the show how big his, uh, how much he was using. And I forget what the number was, but it was a ridiculous amount of data. I mean, it was, it was, Un, it was impossible, actually. And so we kept challenging him on it. And I kept writing to these guys. I'm on the show on occasion, but I kept saying, you know, I, I don't see how you could do it without streaming video on every device all day, every day, 24 seven. You can't get that high. And he finally figured out what it was. He did something he thought was brilliant. He took his, uh, ex- his, uh, uh, oh, what's Microsoft's um, uh, email tool called? Outlook. Outlook took Outlook. his Outlook email database and he thought, you know what would be really smart is if I instead of keeping it local, I'll keep it in my OneDrive. So I put it in OneDrive and it, but it turns out the it's a it's a bundled database. So every time he would get, say, a spam email, it would transfer the entire bundle of every email he'd ever gotten before back up to OneDrive. 
Mm. Mm. So he, wow. he was doing just these tiny little changes, you know, he would, you know, send hi mom. And that would be, you know, like 20 gigabytes would go up every time. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, it, was, yeah. it was such a, it was the best technical mistake ever. It was hilarious. That is insane. Oh my God. So um, not, not nearly as, as techy as you guys are. Uh, my geeky thing of the week, my girlfriend and I have been planning for a while now to do a doctor who podcast, but what's going to make our show different than the millions of them that are out there is we are, starting with the very first episode from 1963 and are going to Um, attempt this massive conquest of the entire show. Now, it remains to be seen how far we're actually going to get, but we actually started the process of of wading through this massive catalog this week. No way. Yeah, and it's, it's happening, man. It's in full force now. So we're probably in the next couple of weeks, we're, we're going to start recording. How much uh, time this can you have on your hands for that? Well, see, we're kind of doing it smartly. We're not going to release it. We're not going to, we're not going to try to release it, <laughs> you know, record and release weekly or anything like that. We're going to wait until we record an entire season's worth and then release it weekly as a season. And then we'll, you know, whenever season two starts, it might be a year later, it might be six months later, whatever. And um, we're going to wait until we have a full season recorded and then start releasing. So that's a cool idea. Yeah. Are, are you familiar with um, uh, uh, Dave? I'll get it yet. God, I'm bad at names. Ken Ray and John Champion's uh, Star Trek podcast. No. Uh, they they did that same idea. They started at the original series, and they're going through every single episode of of Star Trek from the beginning. That's awesome. See, that's something I could really get into. I've I've probably seen ninety percent of all the Star Trek that's out there already. Oh, it's it, it, they've gone out of the way to not um tr- to try to not talk about anything happening in current time. So you can start at the beginning of the show and start listening, and it's like it just happened. It was it just came out. They're partway through Next Generation right now. I think we're I don't know four or five uh four or five seasons through. And uh, it's it's fabulous because John Champion actually knows a whole lot of stuff about the production and and um, it, oh it's actually endorsed let's call it by Rod Roddenberry Gene Roddenberry's son yeah uh, who's a personal friend of theirs and uh, so they get access to a lot more information than you would think you would normally think but it's been really cool they even went through the animated series that wow. is so cool that the animated series is one of those things that I've seen maybe one episode when I was like six or something like that. It's, it sounds horrible, but it actually wasn't bad. Uh, the show, by the way, is called the mission log podcast. Ah, cool. Yeah. I might have to check that out. Maybe I can get some ideas on, uh, formatting our show. How they do it. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. do. They do kind of a synopsis of the show and then they go in their case, they go through the morals, messages and meanings and, and does the show hold up? Ah, I see. Okay, yeah, because we were so, we were kind of thinking about doing uh, basically a recap to start, and then talk about uh, almost the same thing, sort of like the message of the show, uh, what they're yeah. trying to get across, and then go into a little bit of the history, like the the production history, and how it kind of fits into the uh, you know the universe as a whole, and uh, you know just kind of go into things like that, continuity type things with you know how it fits in with current stuff or. Uh, if something if something significant like you know this is the first time you see a Dalek or, you know things like that that um, maybe lends itself to m- more to people that are are current Doctor Who fans, um, but also anybody that that has never seen Doctor Who before will still you know be able to follow along and know what we're talking about. So that's kind of cool because Doctor Who is one of those things where you're either completely deeply into it and it's the center of your world or. You maybe caught an episode, but you're not really sure that's what it was. And uh, <laughs> right. I, I find it hard to talk to Doctor Who people because I didn't watch enough of it. I've watched down four or five episodes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's exactly where I'm at with it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's one of those things that uh, Doctor Who was always a kind of a hole in my in my geek cred. I didn't really have any experience with it. You know, again, it was one of those things when I was a kid, I might have caught an episode or two on PBS on accident or something. Uh, like way back in the Tom Baker years. And, um, but I always wanted to kind of start from the beginning, like we're, like we're doing now, but I never really had the opportunity or like somebody to watch it with. 
And, yeah. Um, but my girlfriend got really into the new series. So when, you know, oh. what is it, 10 years ago or whatever, when they kind of, I, w- I don't want to say rebooted it because it's still in continuity with the original stuff. Uh, but like the, the re, um, I don't know, reintroduction, I guess, of Doctor Who. So she's seen everything of that. And I caught oh, okay. probably, I don't know, three or four episodes a season with her. So I kind of am current on what's happening and kind of, you know, I understand the universe of it. Um, but for for her, this is kind of a, you know, you know, the doctor you love, here's where he came from. Me, it's mm-hmm. kind of like, um, all right, I'm sort of familiar with the doctor. Let's let's really get into this. Let's start at the beginning and see where this goes sort of thing. So That'll be fun. Yeah, fun it's, it's excuse to watch it together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So really looking forward to that. Mm. And speaking of things that you can uh, that you can watch together, uh, Kent, you've disappointed me, Sean oh, Aker. Yeah, like sorry. so easy to say. You, you didn't even give me a hard name to say this week. What is this? The Happy Secret to Better Work. Yeah. See, unfortunately, this talk was pretty much exactly what I wanted to talk about. Um, unfortunately, Sean Aker has an easily pronounceable name. The Allison for the uninitiated, the bit is that I try to find the TED talk with the speaker who has the most unpronounceable <laughs> name in English. <laughs> and I, I always try to get Amos to say it. Um, well, maybe I did a little better <laughs> when we get to mine. <laughs> right. Um, but no. OK, so Sean Aker presented the happy secret to better work. And the basic premise is that people have this false idea that uh, the harder we work, the, you know, the more successful we're going to be so that we can be happy later on. So, you know, basically work really hard your whole life, retire, and then that's when I'll have time to be happy. When it really is kind of, we, we had that backwards. We need to be happy, do something that, that um, you know, being in an environment that makes us happy that way we will be more productive, more successful. And then, you know, and that way we're, you know, we're just maintaining our happiness at that point. And one of the things towards the end of the talk, one of the things that really stuck out to me was he was talking about uh, work environments and how that can really affect your, your productivity, not just your productivity, but your actual personal happiness, uh, it, you know, if your boss is always on your case, like, you know, what's, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you get this thing done in this particular fashion? Or, you know, you're, you're not real uh, friendly with your coworkers. Uh, the, the lighting is bad at work. If you're just in a bad work environment, you're not going to be productive. Uh, but if you're in a place where, you know, people encourage one another, uh, people are, are ready to help each other, uh, open sharing of ideas, there's respect... Uh, people tend to be happier and more productive and therefore happier. And so, to me, so we should all work at Google, Apple or, uh, or <laughs> Facebook then, right? Uh, is right. that what you're saying? <laughs> well, no, but, but for me personally, the reason I wanted to talk about this talk was it really kind of drew a line in the sand, uh, like co- contrasting my active duty time, especially the last few years of my active duty time with my current situation. Uh, because as you know, Amos, when I, when I retired, Allison, I retired from the Air Force about a year and a half ago uh, oh, okay. after a 20-year career. And the last couple of years, I was a master sergeant, which is a, a senior NCO. So I was put in charge of a, a section of about 40 people, uh, and which I think is great. Like, that was my goal. I wanted to be a, a master sergeant flight chief because I, I wanted to lead people, teach people. Uh, you know, hopefully mentor some people, be a positive influence on their life and their career. That's what I really wanted to do. However, the reality of it was that I was stuck behind a desk, not able to go out and be with my people. I was constantly doing paperwork. I was going to meetings. Um, I was constantly being... Uh, I'm hesitant to use the word harassed, but I'm going to use it anyway. Um, constantly harassed by upper supervision to, you know, you know, why are you busting this suspense? Where is this paperwork? You need to get on this. Or, oh, that airman that, that um, I talked to you about last week, last week, like, why didn't you punish him the way that I said you should have punished him? Why, you know, just constant, just harping, 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 harping. 
and it was miserable. Sounds terrible. Yeah, it was absolutely miserable, and I could not wait to retire. I retired at the absolute earliest possible time that I could have done it. Uh, it was literally, the legal minimum to yes. retirement is 20 years and zero days. He retired at 20 years, zero days. Yep. Wow. Yep, I could not freaking wait. <laughs> uh, but the things that I, that I loved about my military career was the mission and the people. And so what I did was I, I got a job. I still work for the Air Force, but now I'm a civilian. So I, I got a, a civil service job to work for the Air Force. And the environment, the office that I work in now is absolutely perfect for my, like, workplace uh, happiness. I Sanity. Guess. Sanity, <laughs> yes. Like, because I'm, you know, I feel respected and valued. Uh, I really love the people that I, that I work with. Um, you know, I'm given the, not just the responsibility, but the, the freedom to do my job. Like I was, hired, I was hired to do these things and I've been, uh, empowered to do what I was hired to do. And it's, it that sounds so it. obvious, but that's yeah. not necessarily common as, as you, one would hope. Right. Right. Exactly. And that was, to me, it was just, it was night and day with my, my active duty time and my civil service time. Like it's this talk, like, exactly explains why I'm so much happier now than I was say two years ago. I used to mentor a lot of th those kids uh, when I was working. And one of the things I'd always say to them is you got to realize that you're at work 50% of your waking hours at a minimum. Yes. 50%. I mean, you, you, you're not happy 50% of your waking hours. You've really got to fix it. You got to find another way. Absolutely. It took me medication back at, in Texas to, <laughs> to find my happiness. I'll, I'll be straight up honest with you. I was, I was going to mental health about every other week because the work environment was just that hostile. Yeah. Wow. And I, that's, one of the reasons I was so glad to leave. That's pretty common for, because Amos and I are both flight line maintainers, uh, you know, working on aircraft. Eat and, your own, man. Eat your own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. pretty much. Like it's it's very hostile. That's that was a, a perfect word to describe it. It's 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 not very conducive to um, anything. Yeah, to to. I don't know. It's weird. We have the greatest air force on the planet. Probably the the greatest branch of the military on you know in, anywhere in any country. Uh, but it's I don't know when you're actually in the middle of it and making it happen. It's like how like does that does a meat mean? grinder? Yeah, it's like are all of the other ones like that much worse to work for? I don't know. It's it's amazing. So uh, so Doctor Elizabeth Loftus, how did yes. you? Yes. <laughs> how reliable is your uh, 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 what's that thing called? <laughs> Memory. <laughs> Memory. Yes, yes, that's what it is. Uh, Alex, would you like to share this one with us? Yeah, so uh, Dr. Loftus is a uh, uh, professor at UC Irvine, and she's a um, uh, a scientist who works in memories. And do you remember in the 1990s when it was all hip to talk about repressed memories, mm -hmm. when everybody was sure. going to, to hypnosis and finding out that they were, uh, you know, demon gods possessed them when they were five and that stuff? Yeah. Well, she's the one that actually debunked that. And caused it to stop, uh, to cause them to stop doing it. And uh, what she does is uh, she takes, uh, she can take people and basically implant any memory she wants in on the order of 75% of the people. So she can take a group of people, you guys, and she can say, um, convince you within a week that you were lost in a uh, in a mall as a child. And you'll tell the story of what you were wearing and where your little brother was and describe it in detail exactly what happened. And it's in a it's in a uh, event that never, ever happened. So um, she works in this because uh, there's a lot of people who have been um uh, convicted of crimes because of eyewitness testimony. And eyewitness testimony is basically really, really bad. It, it It's unbelievably inaccurate. And what she tries to prove is, and she talks about this in this, is she proves that you can make these memories happen to people. You can convince them between when they first see a lineup 
uh, to who they end up convicting that they change their story over time of exactly what happened and how confident they are that something happened. Mm -hmm. Um, The reason that she's uh, this particular talk is so near and dear to my heart is uh, one of her students is Dr. Marianne Gary, who uh, now works. uh, She's a psychologist doing the same kind of work and research in uh, New Zealand and is a good personal friend of ours. So there's a personal connection. And uh, and just recently, uh, Dr. Loftus was awarded the John Maddox Prize. It's a new prize. It's only been about around for about five years, but she won it for standing up for science because she was attacked personally. She had death threats. She had uh, was uh, people writing to the university trying to get her fired, all because of the science that she had done. And they wanted to believe that these repressed memories that they were coming up with and these false memories were true, and they weren't. And she just stood up for science. She was she got in a really bad way for a while uh, it, because of this. See, and and I hear all this, and it's all amazing. I'm just I, I'm hopeful that one day you, you know someone like her can come along and and debunk these anti vaxxers Like, can we get that to happen anytime soon? Well, like, it, it's not debunking them that's hard because that's been done. It's getting them to shut up. That seems to be the difficult part. The, the guy that, that originated the whole crap load of, of falsities has already admitted that it was just crap load of falsities and they still keep going. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the best video I've seen, by the way, on that is, um, oh, who the magicians, the great big guy and the little guy. Um, Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller. Mm-hmm. Penn, and Teller. Mm-hmm. Penn and Teller have a video on it that is just spectacular. Yeah. It's done tongue in cheek, but it's fabulous. It's about statistics. Yeah, and it's and just their intro on that episode because it's a it's episode of bullshit that they. Oh, just, oh is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just the the four minute intro or whatever. If you can find it, just look that up. Just uh, Penn and Teller bullshit uh, and anti vaxxers or whatever, and just the intro just explains the whole thing. It's just great. <laughs> it's very theatrical as they are, but it's just yeah. it's just perfect. I, I love, um, I love my thing with memory is that even when I was little, I knew that my my memories were fluid. And I don't know if that's something that most kids, I'm, I'm sure they do at some point, you realize, hey, my memory is changing or whatever. But um, some of the things that I remember distinctly, my mom doesn't remember at all and vice versa. <laughs> and it's, it's caused a major, I don't want to say a major rift, but it's, it's, it's one of those things that, that comes up in conversation considerably often when we're around each other too long. And it's one of those things like, okay, she goes to her way and I go to my way. And we just <laughs> like, neither one of us remembers the truth anymore, but we both know for certain it wasn't the other person's way. Yeah. Oh, so. absolutely. I'm that way with my brother. <laughs> we do that all the time. And he always just claims, cause he's older. He remembers better that, that I was just a little kid when it happened. And he was, you know, he was 13 <laughs> when it happened. So he remembers it. And it's like, I'm certain that neither one of us are right now. Yeah, I I had uh, Dr. Gary on my show a couple of times. And basically, when she's done with the show, you just you don't know what you know anymore. By the time you're done listening to her, you have no clue. You you know, nothing you remember as a child is true. That's awesome. The plasticity of uh, of the memory. Yeah, exactly. Not just memory. I think another issue is that we we also have flawed perception. So two people can see an event happen from basically the same angle, but they will interpret it differently than the other person. Um, yeah, she, she gives that example, a little bit of that example where she says we show uh, uh, two people or we show people two cars hitting each other. Mm-hmm. And we ask one group, um, how fast were the cars going when they hit each other? And we ask the other group, how, how fast were the cars going when they smashed into each other? And one group on average says 33 miles per hour. The other group says 41 just because they use the word smashed. Just the, so it the, might not even be that you uh, saw something different. It's the, the way you were asked changed what you perceived. So crazy. Right. Yeah, yeah, because we have these like inherent biases, wh- whether it's a word bias, like in this case, smash versus uh, whatever the other word was. Just uh, hit. Yeah, yeah, hit, yeah. Uh, we have bias toward uh, you know different vocabulary or, or just even language inflection. But we also have biases for like maybe... Um, I always think of, of fast cars being red, so I'm going to think that the red car was going faster. Oh, absolutely! You know, different, different, all sorts of biases, and let's not even get into like you know racial bias and gender bias and all, all of that sort of stuff. So, our perception is just it's flawed from go, and then you throw in our <laughs> memory imperfection, and it's just yeah, it's amazing that we remember anything with any degree of accuracy. Uh, this is going to be a little bit weird, Kent. Yeah, I, 
I think this is the first episode where me and you both have separate videos, separate TED Talks. Our guest has a TED Talk, and all three of them are recommendations. <laughs> oh, usually they aren't. They're like, this one stinks. Yeah, usually we'll have one. It'll be like, yeah, this one's bad. And then the other two will be great, or, or, we, or one of, somebody won't have one. This time, all three of us have a TED Talk, and all three of them are recommendations. Yeah, I think Tim this is Urban, the first. Yeah. Tim Urban, Inside the Mind of a Master Procrastinator. I actually had my wife pick this out for us on the way home yesterday, and she played it to the Bluetooth on, in the Jeep. So I could listen while, while, we, while she watched. Mm -hmm. And this is my wife to a T. This is probably every procrastinator to a T. And as he says uh, in the video, everyone's a procrastinator at some level. It's a matter of how strong is your panic monster. <laughs> and uh, it's... It, the, the way he describes it is, you know, everybody's got this, this sound person at the wheel of their mind. And they're cruising along. They, they're making good judgments. But then this little monkey comes up, and the monkey just wants to play and have fun all the time. <laughs> well, it takes over. Cause, you know, and and it, until that deadline hits, it, you, you don't care. And then all of a sudden, the deadline is right there, and the panic monster comes in, and you do your best work the last hours of the, of the time period. And, uh, yeah, it, it described it perfectly. I loved it. This talk was funny, funny, funny. And uh, it's got great animations and everything else. And it, it was just uh, genuinely like I, I could I could hear the laughter in my wife's uh, or the, the voice of my wife's laughter. The tone of her laughter was changing as she was acknowledging more and more how much it applied to her. <laughs> oh, really? Nice. It was great. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Now, Kent, I know you are a master procrastinator. Uh, yeah, I'll get back to you about that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, how much procrastination uh, do you succumb to? I'm I'm an engineer. You know, I make lists and I check things off and I get things done. I'm a, I'm not a getting things done person. I don't want to say that. That's for sure. But I uh, I'm not that I'm not big on procrastination. Really, I tend to do stuff. <laughs> yeah, my my level of procrastination is directly proportionate or. Uh, uh, Damn it. I always screw this up. Inversely proportionate to my level of interest. Oh yeah. Yeah. The more interested I am in it, man, I'm, I'm going at it. But as soon as I get bored, bottom of the pile, <laughs> don't care. See, Moving on. My, my procrastination tends to be focused on, on plans because I, I'm more of an implementation person, but if I have to plan something, if like, if I'm put in charge of the, uh, you know, the master plan for something, I tend to want to be a perfectionist. So I want to I want to make sure that I'm not going to screw something up. So I try to plan it out as much as possible, which means that the process takes forever. <laughs> but if I'm given a task, okay, you have these five tasks. Go. I'm kind of like you in the sense of the checklist. Like I'm like, all right, task number one is done. Moving on to the next one. Task number two is done. So forth. And, and he'll put you in charge of making the list. Yeah. 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 Well, it, and that's and that's exactly exactly where I'm going to go. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about a little bit later is finding to do apps. And I just started using Wonderlist, and I told Ken, hey, I'm going to start using this for the shows because I'm losing track. I, I got too many kids in the house. I'm losing track of where I am with the, with the editing. And you're asking, hey, when's the show going to come out? And, and I got to do this, and you're getting guests and this and that. I'm going to use Wonderlist, and we're just going to share it out, and that's just how it's going to be. And if you don't use it, I don't care, but <laughs> I have to have something. And he's going to say, well, if you give me a list, I'll just mark it off and just keep on going. I'm sitting there thinking... Man, except for this. <laughs> except for, yeah, see, electronic lists, I, yeah, those don't, I don't know. I'm more of a sticky I, note kind of guy. <laughs> I, I got I to gotta start mailing them some papers, actually, right. in this now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you have tried using Wonderlist and he still doesn't do it? I thought he was the get her things done th guy. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I'm, I just downloaded it last night, so. Oh, okay. It's it, it, it might work. My husband and I started using that a while ago, and it's it's the only thing we've actually stuck with. Uh, I do find, though, that when the list gets too long, I start using pieces of paper instead because I don't like looking at that big list. So I've got a great big list on my uh, um, on Wonder List. I have this checklist right on my desk right now that I've got like eight things because I know if I put it on that list, I won't get it done. But if well, I had somebody who got stuff done, I would totally just start going, hey, Kent, do this, do this, do this, do this. Right. right. Uh, my, my wife, my wife's more the See, I have multiple lists because I have multiple people that I'm dealing with. My wife on the, you know, just the, the little reminders app on the iPhone. 
we mm-hmm. have shared throughout the family. And that's just, that's the only, she just needs single steps. It's like, uh, get new plates for the, for the truck. Okay. That's one step for her and she's good. But for me, I'm like, I got to get new plates for the truck. That means I got to make sure I got my insurance card. I got to make sure I got this, you know, I have to break it down one step deeper than that. And yeah, wonder list lets you do that, by the way, yep, you can have it, subtasks, but you can't go any further than that. Yeah. And, and so it's not too complicated and it works on your iPhone. It works on your Mac. It works on where you've got a, a client. You can do a web based. You pretty much have no excuse not to do it. Yeah. That's why I write stuff on paper when I don't like my list. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I tried GTG or GTD, uh, things like OmniFocus and things like that. You can break it down into infinite levels of yeah. city and I just end up getting swamped. So I'm thinking Wonderless is going to be right down my alley, right down that middle road. Yeah, it, it, I I read the book, um, and I, I it was when I had uh, was transitioning between two jobs. They actually gave me nothing to do for a while, which was really weird. And so I went through and I took all my my uh, uh, folders in my in my file cabinet and I labeled them all with pretty little labels and did, followed the whole thing and everything. But it only worked because I had nothing to do. So I had plenty of time to do all this this weird crap. But uh, my friend Dorothy is a big GTD person. She uses OmniFocus and she swears by it. And and I always have this vision of how she gets everything done. And I said, so do you ever have those tasks that you just keep moving on to the next day and to the next day and the next day? And she goes, oh, yeah, all the time. I was like, oh, OK, so you're still normal. <laughs> yeah, at now, work, I'm, a, I'm totally a, a sticky notes kind of guy, a post-it guy. And I'll, I'll put a task on a on a sticky note and then. And that's, I guess that's part of my flatline mentality. Uh, but the way that I will push a, a task back is I'll just, I'll take it off the top of the stack and I'll put it on the bottom of the stack. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's still on my list, but I'll get to it later. <laughs> now, uh, Allison, that almost seemed like a pretty good review of Wonderlist right there. And I noticed that on your podcast, that's, a, that's something you do quite often is, is get a, a great overview on, uh, on an app or, or some hardware. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that, about your podcast? So, gosh, talk about my show. That I, I, How much time do we have left? Um, <laughs> so my show is named purposely so that you can't ever claim I'm off topic. It's uh, it's called the Nocilla Cast. has no meaning whatsoever. And uh, it's actually my name spelled backwards, if you can believe it. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you know how to spell my name. Uh, it's no Silicast, and it's a technology geek podcast with an ever so slight mo- Macintosh bias. So that lets me talk about pretty much anything I want that's kind of in the tech realm. And uh, so I really like to play with new software. I, I will load software just any, I mean, you brought up this, uh, this OBS software. I'm installing it right now. I mean, I'm just going to do that. I remember I installed three applications on a BlackBerry at a stoplight once on my way home from work. And I mean, it's hard to find BlackBerry software at the time, but uh, uh, I I mostly like software, but I love hardware stuff too. Um, I I just got the new MacBook Pro, the the, uh, Touch Bar uh, MacBook Pro. And uh, the idea of playing with new hardware and messing everything up, that's, that's just the most fun ever. That that's pretty much the core of that show. My other show is called uh, Chit Chat Across the Pond, and there used to be one show. So, like, I put in the show notes a link to the uh, to the episode where Marianne Gary, Dr. Marianne Gary, was on talk about memory. And back then, it was all one giant show, and it was just getting longer and longer and longer. And finally, one day, I said, "I'm just going to crack it in half." So you get two shows a week, and um, Chit Chat Across the Pond is it's always tech focused. Every other week, it's kind of uneven right now, and I got, I'm trying to think whether I need to break this apart. Every other week, it's just a, a light and interesting tech interview. It's me talking to somebody in tech that I think is interesting. It might be about accessibility. It might be about some cool hardware tool. You never know what it's going to be. Then the other every other week was with a guy named Bart Bouchatz, who is a real propeller beanie geeky. So he's working on a series right now called Programming by Stealth. So he started with teaching me uh, HTML and then into CSS, and now we're into JavaScript. It's been going for like 35 episodes now, so that's, what, 70 weeks? And uh, uh, he also did one called Taming the Terminal. Where if you ever want to know anything about using the terminal, you want to learn, get really good at it, he did a, um, it's like at least a 25-part ep- uh, series on that that we released as its own podcast as well. So that's kind of the the three different things that go on in the uh, in the pod feet uh, paradise. I don't know. I'm looking for another word with P to go with that. Pod feet productions, maybe. <laughs> there you go. That fits. Um, something something that I've noticed about, uh, of course, 
my introduction to you was on DTNS. I mean, we've already discussed that. Um, and then listening to your shows, it, it was the matter of you don't take a really serious, deep dive look at any particular issue, but you kind of break things apart into real experiences. And you, you, you don't try to, you don't, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to say it. You don't like try to dig further than you should. You cover what's there and you just do it in a casual manner. That's really easy to follow along. And I find that so different because most tech podcasts read regardless of how tech they are, including this one. Uh, <laughs> A lot of times we reach too far and we're trying to get, we're trying to almost show off our knowledge. And it's not like that with your shows at all. It's really just, it's a really casual um, experience. And sometimes like the latest two episodes, I noticed you, you ran over the whole migration thing once and kind of quickly. And then the next episode you came back and relayed it again and then said, okay, well, here's the actual solution. And it was just a, in a real personable manner. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I do sometimes, I, I got a lot of uh, applause for something I did once where I did deep dive really deep. And it was a funny thing. It was a, uh, it was a review of a, uh, a device called Backtrack. Uh, it's a uh, breathalyzer. And it's this little little USB uh, or Bluetooth uh, breathalyzer that you can. It's around a hundred dollars, and um, they said in the literature that they uh, complied. It was the same kind of stuff the, that the cops use. And I was like, well, I wonder what that is. And I started digging and digging and digging, and I ended up actually reading and studying the reports of how the data was collected and and uh, how they did the comparison studies and who actually contributed the studies. Like it was actually written by the Backtrack company, uh, but. But it was accepted by the, I think it would be an FDA one on that. I think it was FDA. It was quite a while ago. But I mean, it was one of those things where I just kept getting more and more interested and people actually liked it that I dove just like pinhole deep into this one little topic. But it was it was kind of fun. I, I actually saw those at Sam's Club right before I went to Korea and thought about buying one. I was like, no, that's probably not a good idea. Why? I, th- I think it's pretty cool. I mean, a way of empirically knowing, should I drive? Because you're not always the best judge, right? Uh, well, I didn't really have a vehicle over there, but anytime oh. you get around a bunch of soju and give me a breathalyzer, <laughs> that's just a challenge accepted. Oh, so- <laughs> yeah. You're trying to see how high the number will go. You mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, never that- once thought of using it that way. That's <laughs> awesome. It's like the, the Korea Olympics. It's like the Osan Olympics. Uh, uh, it, just, it just, it just wouldn't turn out good. It would be, <laughs> we, we wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> I just can't believe that never occurred to me. That's awesome. <laughs> I won. Oh crap. Oh crap. He's dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. That's hilarious. Um, oh. And then Uber got invented and we stopped worrying about it. Yeah, right. Yeah. That literally is the, the last time we stopped, we used it was like, Oh, we'll just always have someone else drive. Yeah, exactly. And, and, oh yeah. God, I wish, I wish there were ride sharing in the town that I live in. I'm so far in the, the boondocks of the desert that we don't have ride share here. Oh, that stinks. Yeah. Um, super sad. So, so you've been going for nearly 11 years now, which is something I didn't know. I, I knew it had been a long time. I mean, you're on episode 603 or something like that. Something like that. Actually, it's 2005. No, it's 11 going on 12, I think. Right. Same. 2005. To, yeah. Uh, for a solo show. Yeah, actually, that's probably easier than a, some with someone else because somebody always splits off. But yeah, I'm I am very good at something habitual. Like I, I told you, I worked for 35 years for the same company. I've been married to the same man for I think 33 years, if my math is correct. I just I don't change. Anything. I I've been going to the same hairdresser for like 20 years. I don't even like her that much, but it's what I do. You know, once I start doing something, I'm I'm in. Yeah. What what uh, what got you started with the whole podcast thing? Like 2005 it was brand new. Yeah, yeah. So it started in October of 2004, and I started in May of 2005. Um, it, it was a it was a couple of things. I am the kind of person that will stop somebody at a grocery line and say, "Hey, do you see this really cool app? You need this." And I thought maybe instead I should talk to people who care, you know, who wanted to listen. And uh, you know, that was a new thing. But um, if you listen to my very first show, what I said I was going to do was I was going to tell you about things I'd read in the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> 
<laughs> so this uh, th when Walter Mossberg was there, I would read I would read his text things and I would talk about him. And I did a couple of shows like that. And then I went to uh, I used to get to go to the All Things Digital Conference. And so I, I did. I talked about what I learned at those. Those were amazing. If, if you, anybody doesn't know what those are, um, they were they were tech. It was a very short tech conference, like a day and a half, two days, something like that. And uh, they had huge names. That was where Steve Jobs and Bill Gates got on stage together. And I was there. And so um, that wow. wasn't that year, but uh, I, I would yeah. talk about those kind of things. And then as soon as I, I got done with those five shows, I, I stopped and I just didn't do anything for a little while. And this guy, Neil, a jumbo shrimp in uh, Florida, wrote to me and said, where's the podcast? And I knew that somebody was listening. Yeah. And that that changed everything. It was like I am going, to, I am going to do that. I'm going to keep going. So it was a it was a good way to um, to to really uh, be able to talk to people about what I was passionate about and not necessarily bother to the neighbors. I still bother everybody about it in line at the grocery <laughs> store, though. <laughs> Would you consider now, yourself a pioneer? Um. Yeah, I guess so. I'm not the first Mac podcaster. Uh, Adam Christian was Christensen was the uh, was the first, uh, but certainly you know breaking ground. I mean, I did my my feed by hand, uh, coded it by hand to start with, mm -hmm. and the way I figured out, Leo Laporte had started doing a podcast, and I downloaded his feed and looked at it and broke it apart. And it's and it's actually pretty easy to read. It's got like a, a bracketed thing on either side that says title, and you know it says episode name, episode date. Uh, the thing that that uh, uh, screwed me up was one of them was length and it was this big long digit number it was like what uh, length what was that i was like is that seconds what it was it was bits it was to total bits and and so that one took me a while to figure out how to find that one but once i got that i uh i did it by hand i eventually moved on to using a product called feeder from reinvented software that lets me uh, do the feed very very easily now but uh so yeah it was it was kind of hammer and chisel back then to get it done uh, but, uh, that was, it's, it's been an amazing journey. And I think, you know, I thought I was going to be telling people stuff, but I, I was saying during, during the break that I do a live show now on Sunday nights at 5 PM Pacific time. And, uh, and, uh, that show is me creating the show. So it's not a live production. It's simply watching me do the recording. Stop. I talk to the chat room. I insert items. I let people, I stop and, and chat. And what that started to cause was a community. And the community became a much bigger thing about this than, than the tech itself. It's sort of an excuse to get together. And, uh, and we, it's just some of the funniest things that have happened. Uh, I don't know if you can see right here, but um, there's a uh, sausage grinder on my, uh, where is it? That way. Whoop. Nope. Finger the wrong direction. There's a sausage grinder on my mantle behind me. And that was a gift from a listener because they often refer to it as watching the sausage get made. Uh. <laughs> so uh, somebody, uh, Kevin, big in Virginia, uh, sent me that. Uh, there's a, a, a twit brick here. Uh, I it's really hard to point when there's a lag. There it is. There's a twit brick that uh, George from Tulsa sent in and a couple of posters. And there have been all kinds of little gags and pranks that have happened because these people have gotten to know together. The Geekiest Thing Ever uh, podcast sprung up from two guys meeting each other in the live chat room. So they don't even care about me anymore, you know. <laughs> so, so what I'm getting from this is, one, you broadcast – you re you making the show as opposed to broadcasting the show, correct? So, and we should probably try that. And two, <laughs> al almost uh, almost immediately, you got viewer feedback. Kent, we should really try that. Absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh! Did you guys know there is a live chat room? I don't know if you've ever. There's these people. They're talking down here. Uh, yeah, actually. Dark Redeemer brought up another P word for you, Podneer. Podneer. Oh, I like it. <laughs> oh, I like that word a lot. Uh, but no, I should Allison, say. I'll, I'll, I I'll, should. Oh no! Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say. I should say that one of the common phrases in the uh, in the chat room is is that woman still talking in the corner? That annoying woman there. So. All right. <laughs> uh, no, but you bring up a, a really good point. You you were talking about our our chat that that. Um, we d that we're displaying on our stream that we interact with. Um, you, you're absolutely correct. That is that is immediate feedback. And you talk about community. Diamond Club is a, a community very much like what you're talking about. Uh, we've made some really good friends. 
um, it's just it's absolutely wonderful the the people that come together in a in a community surrounding shows like this, and that that's one of the reasons that this New Year's Eve we are doing what is now officially titled the New Year's Eve Streamathon. Oh yeah. no! Yeah, <laughs> we're 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 going to be streaming. Uh, well, not us personally. Uh, for the entire time, but we're organizing a, what is it, Amos? A 27 hour stream? In 27 hour stream. Yeah. Last year was, uh, I did 24 hours, 24 minutes consecutively, uh, all on my own with a bunch of help from some people, but I was, I was there the entire time yep. not doing that again this year. So this year, <laughs> as many people as possible, as many other streamers on diamond club uh, to come in and really put forth an effort to raise some money for, uh, extralife.org, which we'll have more details coming soon. And we've got some swag to auction off and to give out there. And uh, it's going to be a great time. It's for a good cause. And really, the basis is to make sure that no Diamond Clubber or Frog Panther is alone on New Year's Eve. So everyone will have a chance to celebrate New Year's Eve with a live chat room and someone to watch yep. and someone to be, to entertain, no matter where to you hang out are, with. Yeah. No matter where you are on the planet, there will be a DC TV stream at your new year. Yeah. So at, you at know, midnight at your, there's time. something about diamond club and, and frog pants that is the warmest, hardest people I've met. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Steve and I went to, um, Nerdtacular the, it, it was pretty fun. And right after we retired, everybody said, what are you going to do tomorrow? And we said, we're going to Nerdtacular <laughs> as one does. <laughs> and, uh, and we didn't really fit in there because we aren't gamers, but, um, I've never met such friendly, warm people. Mm-hmm. And I, I realized what it was, was I was with my people in that all of us were the last people picked for the softball team or the kickball team. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And so all of us are just really happy when someone talks to us. And <laughs> and, and I think uh, Scott and, and Brian and, and Tom and those guys and jury, they, they just they engender a kindness. And, you know, there's a there's a, a feeling and a heart to it that I haven't seen in anything else that that's really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, any chance and then of- they let you guys in. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I don't know. It's, uh, we, we- we, we snuck in the back door as we do. Um, right. Is there any chance you're going to be at Nertacular this year? Uh, no, we actually didn't know about it until after it was sold out, I think. Oh, uh, it's, I, it's sold out, right? Yeah, it, but it, I think is, Scott, Scott's out. trying to open up a few more tickets. He's trying I'm, to find I'm, some I'm room. Sure, I'm sure you could put a word in and, uh, and, and get some. Mm. some yeah, I, I, I bet you and Steve <laughs> could get in. I think we could make that happen. Yeah, I, I'll, you guys are going? Bet. We, yeah, are, we are. We are. We've we've got everything. Everything but the plane tickets. Yeah. So we'll be yeah. there. We'll be at South by Southwest and at Nertacular this year. Even if uh, it just that location was spectacular too. I just we went for a hike up into the mountains there, and at one point we went back to our hotel room with uh, with Adam Christensen and and just had beers and looked at the mountain. That was that was actually one of my best memories, other than meeting all the people. Yeah. Yeah. It's really awesome. really neat. This will be our first year there, and my fourth South by. So this is oh, wow. kind of a big year. Yeah. Um, so anybody um, that's interested in the streamathon, you can go to yellow 420.com slash marathon two zero one seven marathon 2017. Uh, yeah. and, uh, there, and there are some, some very exciting updates coming to that very soon. We have certain things in stone that we're just not ready to announce yet. We've got a bunch of other stuff in the works that we're still tweaking a little bit, but it's all very exciting stuff. Uh, go there, sign up if you want, uh, or just kind of lurk in there, check it out every couple of days because there is some really cool stuff coming there real soon. Yep. Hey, uh, you know, it's really, what else is really cool, man? When you have a piece of equipment, say, say you've got a, a Nintendo Wii. Oh, which now, I do. They, they've, they've been out for a while. Stuff's starting to break. It's starting to, it's getting harder and harder to, uh, to find replacement parts, right? So, I mean, where would you go for something like that, right? Well, yeah, and see, the thing is that I have, like you said, a Nintendo Wii, but the the sensor bar went bad on mine, and I go to yeah. Walmart. They don't have these things to replace it. We don't have a nerd store here anymore. It's not like I have a Fry's Electronics or anything like that. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of left at the, the mercy of the Internet. I I went to one site where... Uh, I could get a replacement. It was like 25 bucks or something like that. It'd be really how about, cool. How about six bucks? 
Oh, dude, I would I would probably buy two of them for six bucks. Six bucks. Uh, then you should head on over to geekandgamergear.com. Geek, the letter N, gamergear.com. Cruise on over there. Get you a $6 Nintendo Wii replacement sensor bar. Use the code Ritual Misery and you get it for five dollars and forty cents because they're going to give you ten percent off your first order. Man, is it I'm, now? Is that your entire order or is that just that's one your, item? Your entire first order, Whoa! not just your first item. No your entire way. first order, ten percent off. Uh, Geekandgamergear dot com. Cruise on by there. Use the code Ritual Misery at checkout, and uh, you help this show. You help yourself. Everybody's happy. It's just great stuff, man. Yep, really cool stuff there. Check it out. Geekandgamergear dot com. Ritual Misery at checkout for 10%. Problem solved. Now, sometimes you got to buy replacement parts as gifts. And, <laughs> and I got to tell you, I saw some crazy Black Friday deals and some crazy, uh, uh, was it pink or maroon Monday or what is it now? What? <laughs> Cyber, <laughs> Cyber Monday is the only thing I Cyber know. Monday. <laughs> yeah, they, they keep changing the color on it, though. It messes me up every time. <laughs> I've never even uh, heard a color associated with it. Now, now the thing that got me this year, and I, 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 I tried to nail down some specifics I wanted to talk about. What really what it came down to was on Amazon. Every time I looked at their little deals of the day all through the weekend, everything seemed so outdated. USB 2.0 hubs. Uh, at one point, they had a uh, uh, some adapters for like PS2 to USB adapters. Like, how, why, why are you going to sell a pack of five of those? Who the hell wants that stuff? So I was looking at this, and I'm always tech-minded when I'm looking at these things. Like, ooh, is there any good deals that I can kind of snag up real quick? I didn't really see anything. Did you guys see any really good deals out there for, for, for techs? I, I, I didn't. <laughs> no. And, and, you know, something that I've noticed is, that, yeah, you might have a, a TV for cheap, like a, let's say a 55-inch TV for like half of what you would normally get a 55-inch TV for. Uh, but when you look at the stats, it, like I think they create, or, like they they manufacture, like Black Friday specific products with <laughs> lower stats. I'm not even kidding. I think this is a real thing. Um, laptops, I know they do this with laptops, where yep. you know the reason that they're selling you know eighty nine dollar laptops at Walmart or whatever is because it's a piece of shit. That it's, it, it, that, you know, it doesn't do all of the things. It's not as fast. Doesn't have the memory. It doesn't have the bells and whistles that, you know, you pay a hundred more dollars and you get all the, all that stuff. Um, yeah. they, they make these really attractive l- prices for mediocre products for and, something you don't really want. Yeah. And yeah. that's, that's kind of what it, that's how, that's yeah. how I see black Friday fight the crowds for inferior stuff. And I did do uh, one fun thing on uh cyber Monday that, but again, it was something old. Um, <laughs> I, I got an Amazon Echo Dot recently, just kind of for 50 bucks to find out what all the hullabaloo was about. And as I suspected, I haven't done too much. Oh, he's showing his off. Uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, I haven't figured out much to do with it. It's kind of cool. I've had a little bit of fun with it, but it, you know, I haven't, you know, I'm not worshiping it like a lot of people, but, uh, I got this thing in the mail where it was the most brilliant marketing thing I've ever seen in my life. They, they said, Amazon said, look, if you order a fire stick or they had a bunch of stuff, but the thing I wanted was a fire stick. They said, if you order this using voice, you'll get 25% off and a $10 Amazon gift card. Oh, wow. So, but think about what they did. I bought the, uh, the echo dot. They got me to yeah. buy something else. The thing they got me to buy was something that lets you buy and rent movies from them. And what did they give me in return? a gift card so I could buy more stuff. Yes. Yes. I mean, it was, it was beautiful. And when I did it, I just said, <laughs> I, I called out her name and I said, buy a fire stick. And she said, it'll be here on Thursday. It'll be this much money. Do you want to order it? And I said, yes. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was spectacular. <laughs> hook, now here, line, here's the problem. Sinker. <laughs> oh yeah. Hook, line, sinker and a net. I mean, I was, I was down for the count. It was fabulous. But then I, today I thought I, I wanted to buy a, um, uh, an Amazon Kindle for somebody, a paper white. So I said, uh, I said, Hey, whatever name is, I said, uh, order a, uh, a Kindle paper white. And she insisted on telling me about the, the one that doesn't have the ads. And the ads are great on Kindles. Like, who cares? They're just the, they're the lock screen, basically, right? And so she kept telling me it was $139. I was like, no, it isn't. I'm not buying that one. And I tried every way I could think of to order it, and she wouldn't do it. <laughs> That's funny. Crazy. That's you know, crazy. Now, you, mentioned, uh, you mentioned gift cards. 
And every year, Apple puts on a Black Friday sale. And every year, it seems it gets more and more ridiculous and less and less useful. This year, you buy everything for full price, and they were given gift cards away for more Apple stuff. Was it in it? Uh, was it like you got a free gift card with it? Yeah. So you. Well, that's you, good. You buy a two thousand dollar laptop and you get a hundred dollar gift card. And, but they, but there were no discounts anywhere to be seen. And See, I, I like I like the gift card thing. That does that doesn't bother me because you know you're going to spend a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's true. Yeah. Because your next product is going to be you know eight hundred bucks or something, and uh, I'd get it for seven hundred instead of eight hundred. That sounds good. Yeah, uh, the uh, target. They said that uh, targets revenues or, or profit was in the uh, in the black the last quarter. They think mostly because of what they've done with uh, gift cards and 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 rebates and stuff for selling a- Apple products. So, oh wow, I know I know uh, uh, Target's really big on those. Interesting. You know, Amos, I I kind of lied. I said that I didn't see anything interesting, any interesting deals this Black Friday. Um, I didn't see any interesting deals from any of the big box stores. I did see a ton of good deals and interesting sales and things from independent people. Uh, Like, for example, Justin with his contender game, he was Mm -hmm. selling, he was selling the deck for less than half price. I think. Yeah. 1776. That's right. Yeah. 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 1776. (laughs) Um, Brian's scam stuff site had all kinds of sales going on. Um, uh, other, other creators that, uh, that I've seen. Yeah, there you go. There's the contender, uh, and stickers are D I F D I A F. I don't know if he was doing a sale on there or not. Uh, but yeah, there was a lot of independent creators that I, I checked out their stuff and there's really cool deals on there because this is all cool stuff. You know, they're not making much money off of this stuff. Yeah. And for them to, to offer it at really attractive prices is, is, is something. It's, it, there, it seems like they're making a, more of an effort than, than the Amazons and the Apples. And, yeah, it's, it's and, better that way anyway. Yeah. Um, I was talking about Apple earlier, but I did get uh, iPads for all the kids. So all five of them I got on a, on a Best Buy deal well before Black Friday. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, two of them don't know it yet, but they don't listen to the show, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, since the other ones don't don't uh, listen to the show either, I also picked up a set of Rogue One tickets for them for <gasps> for opening night at seven o'clock. Oh, Best dad dude. ever. That is so. that is awesome. I wish I could reserve at my. Like I said, I'm in a little podunk town in the middle of the desert. We don't get to buy tickets in advance. Oh man, do you do you get to pick your seat too? Do they have reserved uh, no, seats? It's, it's open seating. Open, yeah. Okay. We don't. We don't have, we're not. We're not that bougie up here in the in the in the bush, <laughs> as they say. Yeah, in, the, <laughs> in Siberia or wherever it is you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, so, right next door. Speak, right, right next. So, Allison, speaking of Star Wars, are you a Star Wars fan yourself? I'm a little more Star Trek than Star Wars. Well, a lot more Star Star Trek than Star Wars. I'm afraid. Yeah, but, I like um, the previous movie, but I'm a little annoyed at the whole idea of of well, wait a minute. Now we have to. I just got you just got me attached to these characters, and now I have to go get other characters. It, uh, it's the reason I, I I don't like college sports. It's like wait, a minute, I got I'm all about the people. You know, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> well, on on this show we we play a game, um, unbeknownst to regular watchers of our show, we play ritual livery. Basically, what we do is. Throughout the show, we are secretly mining the conversation for words that are said, um, usually by the guest. Sometimes it, it might be a word or a phrase that comes from, from one of the hosts. Um, but basically, we, we take these words and we throw them into a, a, a basically a database that spits them out into a, a um, Mad Libs style, <laughs> basically a Mad Libs ripoff uh, <laughs> thing that we do. Anyway, we, we pick a story for each of our guests to plug these words into. And the story that we have chosen for you this week is actually based on Star Wars. Okay. So maybe we should have gotten so, a Star Trek one uh, set up. Well, for me, but this, this you, work. You, just, you just set it up wrong. Um, <laughs> so in, in response to Star Wars, uh, the, the Rogue One, a Star Wars story, tickets coming on sale this week. We're doing one in the, in the style of, uh, of Star Wars. 
So, uh, Kent, is it my turn to read or your turn to read? Um, I think it's my turn to read. It's your turn. I, yeah, I, I did, think it is. Yeah. I did SpongeBob last time. That's right. Yeah. So it's my, it's my turn to read it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so right. why don't you go ahead and tell us, uh, tell us, uh, uh, Allison's Star Wars story here. All right. So, Al- Allison Sheridan, a, a Star Wars story. <laughs> All right. So, here we go. It was a hostile day on Tatooine when the protocol router, C3PO, met the weird droid R2-D2, and a legendary relationship began. The two droids are as different as Knight and VPN. (laughs) C-3PO is scared of his own munchkin, while R2 never lets any memory get in his way. But these droids are both heroes, just as much as any Jedi panic monster. 3PO is always at the ready to offer the interesting odds, and you can always find R2 on top of Luke's spaceship, even during the most techie adventures. They had their share of troubles while debunking with the rebel forces. Who can forget the time R2 was hit by a podcast during the attack on the first death breathalyzer? (laughs) Or the time 3PO was unassembled in Cloud City, only to be put back together by Chewie, who put his pod feet on backwards. (laughs) No one knows how habitually they've suffered while procrastinating against the dark side. Very nice, Ken. Very nice. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) That's pretty clever. I like it. Oh, man. Um, So before we get out of here, Allison, where can people find you directly? Like, you know, the whole or every podcaster's favorite part. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I did have one specific thing I wanted to plug. In general, it's uh, podfeet.com is the best way to find me. And on on Twitter, I'm podfeet. And um, the the thing I wanted to plug was something I think you guys might really want to enjoy. In uh, August of 1945, my father, uh, Ensign John Paul Moorhead, was in a typhoon in World War II off the coast of Okinawa. Mm. He was on an LST, which was a ship that was not... Uh, it, which was a ship that was not expected to be able to come back because they actually let the contracts for these ships before they finished the first test ship. So they were just doing everything real slipshod and everything. And uh, he lived through this typhoon and he wrote he wrote a letter back to my mother and his parents describing in detail what it was like to live through a typhoon. So I have a, I have this letter and I had um, noted voiceover artist Ron David read it for the podcast. Oh, so wow. I, when you hear this guy's voice, you're going to know it. If you ever did you ever watch the series Wings on National Geographic? Oh, he, yeah, that's yeah. Ron David. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. so it, it's I, I thought about reading it myself, but I don't quite have the right voice and I goof around a lot. <laughs> Instead, this is Ron in a real studio and it, it's only about 15 minutes long, but it's it's a it's a pretty cool story. And uh, and I think my my father tells it well and Ron reads it really, really well. And I put it out right before Veterans Day. And I, it, I'd be really honored if you guys would uh, take a look at that. So I put a link to it in the show notes. It's Chit Chat Across the Pond because it is across a pond. Right. It was yeah. Okinawa. Uh, number four sixty three. And I just dropped the link in the chat room. Very nice. And I got to tell you, Allison, you keep bringing back these personal sides of the story. Me and Kent have both been through typhoons in Okinawa. Yep. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm starting to think Okinawa is made of typhoons because a lot of people have told me that. Yeah, they, they pretty much are. They get hit like all summer and fall. There, there was uh, one typhoon in particular where we got hit three times by the same typhoon. Yep. And, and I was actually stuck at work for that whole thing while my family was up at the house watching water leak through the windows. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There, I think that was I, the, I think I think that I was want the to super say it was 140 miles an hour. Oh, that, oh. that sounds. No, no. 110. That's how fast was it? 140. That's that's in the super typhoon range. Let's and we, see. We had a I'm, I'm looking for the number. It's not 140. I'm, I'm searching it right now. Uh, but it was. It's, oh, it was definitely over 100 miles. Oh, it was more than 100 miles an hour. That's where it was. The, the barometric pressure uh, went to 29, uh, 27.96, which apparently is really low. Yeah. Mm. The, the but there's pictures of the ship and my father. And when I was researching this to make sure I knew facts around the typhoon, I found a site uh, dedicated to LSTs. And I found pictures of my father on the LSD that I didn't have. Oh, wow. Which was pretty cool. That is super neat. Yeah. yeah. Typhoons That's are super scary on the land. I cannot even imagine being on a ship. 
Yeah, yeah they got they got run aground too. Uh, uh, many many ships were lost in this. Um, Fourteen ships, fifty three major ships on the rocks. Oh my! God. When my father counted them. That's oh, man. Geez. I'm definitely gonna check that out. That is that's it's it's an engineer's weird. version of it. I gotta warn you. So he's talking about exactly how they got the ship fixed and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's my kind of story anyway. That's crazy. Very cool. Uh, uh, and you can find all your stuff at podfeet.com. Is that correct? Yeah, that's P-O-D-F-E-E-T. The things on the end of your legs. Sometimes people spell it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And, uh, and check that out. Hey, Kent, it is the last day of the month, man. It is. It is the last day of the month. You, it, like now, if you're watching this right now, it is your time to jump on the old Patreon bag- bandwagon Cruise on over to patreon.com slash ritual misery and uh, just kick a buck in. Just kick a buck, man. Just kick a buck. And uh, next week we will be naming out all of our patrons. And we really appreciate that. That's so awesome. And thank you guys for everything on that. And Kent, what else are we doing next week? Um, next week we are honored to get Crunchy on the show. She has been on once before, I think, with but a co host. Yeah, we have not had a no kidding crunchy exclusive on this show, but we will yeah. have that next week. I'm really looking forward to that episode. Very cool. And Kent, where can people find you? Twitter's the best place at RM underscore Del Noche. If you are a beer person like me and you want to read my boring 500 plus reviews of beers, you can go to ratebeer.com and look up username Del Noche. Where are you at, Amos? Of course, I'm on Twitter. It's always Twitter. What What are we gonna do as podcasters when Twitter finally goes bankrupt? Because I don't think nobody wants to buy them. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. It better. Not. I have I have noticed that no matter what people plug, the very the the single thing everybody plugs is they'll say their Twitter handle. It's sort of the yeah. the convergence in the middle of everything else, right? Yeah, it absolutely is. It's, I it's didn't the have thing Twitter that everybody uses and nobody pays for. It's I don't I don't understand <laughs> it at all. <laughs> I have to ask Kent. Kent, how do you feel about Ballast Point? Uh, Ballast Point beer is yeah. Uh, well, the the couple of varieties that I've had is pretty good. I enjoy it. Good answer. Good answer. My son-in-law is the director of product operations. Oh, cool. That's really cool. Um, <clears throat> if if I could get a hookup, that'd be um... <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm so excited. I finally know a guy. I mean, yes, I've always wanted to be. Awesome. You know, hey, don't you know a guy? I know a guy now. Yes, that's <laughs> I get the best and a one. Beer guy is a really good guy to know. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Um, so yeah, you can follow me, uh, at, uh, the aforementioned bankrupt, soon to be bankrupt Twitter, uh, <laughs> at Ethan Kane, and you can find, follow the show at ritual misery, submit ideas on a subreddit, ritual misery. Reddit.com email us podcast at ritual misery.com. And of course you can find all these and more ways to support the show at ritual Uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music and thank you for listening and watching for Kent, for me, For Allison and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Bye. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs) Thank you so Uh, much uh, for joining us, Allison. This was a blast. That was really, really fun.